Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Again, sort of uh, sorry about the noise from the outside. I do have the window open, so you'll be hearing the crickets and cicadas and birds and everything that's going on, because it is warm. <laughs> it's really getting nice and warm this year. Um, today, we are looking at a ship that I sort of completely missed when it came out, but I think she was in a bundle or, or, or somewhere relatively recently, because a bunch of you have asked me about the ship. Uh, this is the Fen Yang, the Tier 8 Pan-Asian destroyer. Now, the Fen Yang uh, started out as an Akizuki-class destroyer built by the Japanese, but she was completed, well, pretty much at the time when the war ended, so she was handed over uh, to the Republic of China, not the People's Republic of China, the other one, uh, also occasionally known as Taiwan, these, you know, that one. So uh, they got her and um, reclassified her as a training ship in, I think, 1949 and then scrapped the ship eventually in the 1960s, roundabout-ish. But uh, this, yeah, this was an Akizuki class. So the, uh, the main difference between the, well, uh, Fubuki Akatsuki class, which were the more traditional destroyers, and the Akizuki class, which were built as carrier escorts, was, were the guns. Because the the, uh, the older destroyers had 127 millimeter guns, which were technically meant to be dual purpose, but in practice just never had the setup for it. Whereas these things had 100 millimeter guns, which were a lot more effective at that role, and these were meant to be well carrier escorts as AA destroyers. So that's where these came from. Now, in in best uh, tradition, the Fen Yang actually gets the deep water torpedoes. So we were looking at the, yeah, we see it over here, deep water torpedoes, which is a bit of an issue, <laughs> which we'll get to in a minute. But of course, the, the main comparison that we're going to have to take is between the Fen Yang and the actual Akizuki, which is, well, the lead ship of her class. So we compare the two of them. We see that uh, the Fen Yang gets an additional engine boost. She gets an additional uh, smoke screen, but she trades the uh, torpedo reload for a defensive AA. Now, for a destroyer that was meant to be an anti-air destroyer, this makes sense. But uh, in game, it does come with its drawbacks. So let, let's compare the let's compare the numbers between the two. Uh, the Akizuki has marginally more, marginally more hit points. Uh, in return, the Fen Yang is a little bit more maneuverable, but it's really really tiny. Not a big difference. Uh, the guns have a longer range by a marginal difference once again. And do a little bit more damage, but uh, they you you pay for that with the longer reload, so 3.6 versus 3 second base reload. Other than that, they're completely identical. And the torpedoes, uh, since the, she doesn't get the torpedo reload, you can only have you only have the single quad torpedo launcher that you can use, but it does get a faster reload and a longer range at the expense of doing a little bit less damage and has a better flooding chance as well. So. That gets us only down to the AA, and that's where it gets a bit funny, because for some reason the Fen Yang actually has a worse AA than the Akizuki, at least on the small caliber AA. But in return she does get the uh, she does get the defensive AA skill, and she has a better surface detection, which is not unimportant as well. So it's an, it's an air defense 2, which doubles these, right? So if we're looking back at the numbers, effectively we get... Well, 140 on the small caliber and about 340 on the uh, on the uh, on the large caliber AA, which isn't terrible, but it's also not going to uh, make you immune to airstrikes uh, in that ship. The other logical comparison we're going to have to take is between the Fen Yang and the Sien Yang, which is the Tech Tree Tier 8 Pan Asian uh, destroyer, which uh, is of American origin, if I remember correctly. So the Sien Yang also gets the gets the deep water torpedoes. Uh, the Sien Yang gets a smoke uh, not uh, gets a radar and one fewer smoke screen and one fewer engine boost. And the Sien Yang obviously being of American origin gets the 127 mm guns which are frankly pretty good. So wh why am I why am I going on about the uh, about the defensive AA so much? Well, you, you see in in the Akizuki uh, you cannot be rushed by enemy destroyers because they don't know if you've got torpedoes ready. In the Xianyang, 
you kind of can, but the Xianyang has um, has some pretty nasty guns on her, plus the Xianyang's got smoke and radar. Now the Fenyang has pretty good guns, but they are lower caliber. And uh, while she does have a smoke, she has neither hydro nor radar, so she doesn't have any capability of actually countering enemy destroyers. The one thing you can do when an enemy, dest enemy destroyer comes for you is to run away. <laughs> because they should know that you have deep water torpedoes which can't hit destroyers. Now in the Xianyang, um, especially with the radar, it can be a bit daunting for, for an enemy destroyer to attack you and you can actually actively hunt enemy destroyers in that thing just using your guns. In the Akizuki is not such a great option because she isn't quite as maneuverable plus the guns are low, lower caliber while they do reload faster. Um, they don't do as much damage, and uh, but you still have the torpedoes, so that's the one thing you don't have in the Fenyang, and you did you do trade that for the better AA. So it's a little bit like a halfway between a Swedish destroyer <laughs> and a Pan Asian destroyer in that regard. Anyway, let's have a look at how I've set her up. Uh, I actually use the main battery mode two here for for reload because. Well, mostly because nothing else makes sense. The um, the turret rotation is fast enough. You don't really need the torpedo tube rot rotation in this ship. Uh, the secondaries don't make sense. You could say, you could take this one for um, for AA range. That would be one thing you could possibly do. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, other than that, um, I haven't had any problems with my gun turrets being shot off. So this, this is not a terrible option. Uh, I've got propulsion in two and I've got concealment obviously in slot three which gets us down, if we're looking at the stats, uh, to a, a pretty pretty good detection of 4.6 kilometers, which is utterly useless because you're not, in a, you're not in a torpedo boat destroyer by any means whatsoever because you don't get the torpedo reload boost. So you only have one quad set, and even though if it reloads faster, you're not a stealth torp destroyer at all. If you're not using your guns, you're not playing the ship right. So that's not really been making... that's not really a huge uh, benefit. And the uh, the rudder uh, the turn time of 4.3 seconds is definitely on the low side, but uh, we did get the guns down to 3.4, which is good. I have put the historical camo on the ship because uh, tier eight, um, and and on honestly, I love the Akizuki and I love the Sien Yang, and I've got the historical camo on both of them in my personal account, I think. They're both excellent tier 8 destroyers, so she's got a really, really big shoes to fill here. This gives us uh, main battery range, top range, uh, the traverse, which is much needed, and uh, obviously the, the much better surface detection. Uh, Commander-wise, uh, underwater to uh, yeah, underwater protection and and the torpedo alert. Obviously, you could technically go for an additional AA defense, but I don't think you'll need it because if a carrier focuses on you then you're not going to survive long enough to use four defensive AAs unless the carrier really doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, you, you, I, I did get the air defense expert sk uh, skill, obviously, and uh, the daredevil, the exploit weakness is much, much recommended because setting fires is something these ships are really, really, really good at. And uh, obviously the Mistweaver as well. Alrighties. Well, I think that about sums it up, so let's uh, take her out for a spin and see how it goes. And we'll start out with a battle where everything goes my way, and then the second one will be a bit different. So uh, we are uh, top tier, up against Gasconia, Bismarck, Amagi, Wichita, Tashkent. And uh, there's two bots on, on the enemy team as well. We're playing Domination on Aurora. So. Again, the main difference here is um, the deep water torpedoes for me. I mean, other than that, you could say, yes, the defensive AA is a little bit of a thing, but uh, you have deep water torps and you only have one set. So you don't have the alpha strike that you have on an Akizuki. You do have to keep that in mind. Uh, and um, But yeah, other than that, you can just play this like a normal destroyer. She does get the better concealment, so rushing a cap is a little less daunting than in an Aki. But uh, we are going to head over to A Cup and see if we can if we can capture that cup and you know <laughs> maybe maybe turn over to B. But it looks like the other destroyer on our team heads into B. I can't remember if that was a bot or not. Uh, you never yeah it's probably a bot because he's just heading everywhere. Uh, changed its mind goes to C. Okay we spotted something. There's one of there's one battleship over there. 
And these things are not the fastest destroyers out there. But uh, effectively what you want to do, and okay, we know enemy destroyer in B, haven't spotted them yet. Uh, torpedoes lined up, and, we, and, and it's a bot Nagato, okay. So uh, we, we do have more smoke screens, and there's the Tashkent in B cup, so let's see if we can do something about that thing. Oh, and there's, there's the other bot. So that was a waste of a smoke screen, because uh, bots can spot you in smoke screens most of the time, so that was a bit unfortunate. Uh, I am using the HE here against the Mayan, but that's because it's a bot, and bots don't Danukon. I just need to get these bots out of the way such that they don't they don't recapture uh, recapture A cup. But uh, other than that, uh, on a on a on this range, you probably want to use armor piercing against destroyers. Okay, there's the Nagato uh, that needs to de die as well. My team seems to have been completely buggering off, and nobody wants to cap anything. So, uh, oh no, no, never mind. My team's cupping B. That's probably our own bot. <laughs> Let's see how long it survives. Okay, we do need to get rid of that bot Nagato, which is a little bit unfortunate that they're both coming my way, because there's also an Amagi, and um, uh, there was a Tashkent around here somewhere. Okay, I, I need to vacate A, because I again, I don't have the Alpha Strike to uh, to, to one-shot uh, an Amagi, because I only have one set of torpedoes. And um, bot, if you're in a destroyer, bots can actually be reasonably dangerous, because they do tend to, uh, if you're not paying attention, because they do tend to fire the right ammunition at times, and um, getting blapped in the side by Nagato HE is not something I really want to uh, experience if I don't have to. So um, we've lost A cup, and uh, we'll drop some torpedoes into that Nagato's wake. Bo uh, bots also have magic torpedo dodging powers, sometimes. Hey, there you see, he's firing high explosive at me. Um, but, uh, and, oh, that, that might have been the secondary, so he's still shooting armor piercing. Uh, yeah, bot, bots have magic torpedo uh, dodging powers, but uh, he didn't have much space to go anywhere. So this is a perma flood and a perma fire, and that should get rid of this bot reasonably soon, such that we can equalize out again. But because the enemy team has been holding two caps, we're behind on points, but not by a huge amount. Uh, I'm not sure where that Amagi is going, so I'm gonna try and set him on fire. I mean, he's captured. There's nothing back there. <laughs> what, what, where are you going? Anyway, uh, we have bigger problems. There's a Tashkent and a Wichita. Uh, both not things I want to deal with. So, smoke screen up, and let's try to recapture A while doing something about the Tashkent. Now, here comes my problem. Um, my, my torpedoes are completely useless against the Tashkent, because the Tashkent is a destroyer. So I don't want to hang around in my smoke screen here, because there's a Wichita coming my way, and that thing's nasty. And Tashkent as well. So while the Tashkent... Um, I'm not sure what he's trying to do. I think he's trying to torpedo me, bless his soul. What's, what's the top range on a Tashkent? Four and a half? Something like that? So I do need to move a little bit, and we need to push that Wichita away, and that's where we can use our... Yeah, he's, tr he's been trying to torpedo me. <laughs> yeah, not gonna happen, buddy. Uh, yeah, the Wichita knows that I'm here, so the torpedoes are more there just to get... Um, just to... just to push him away and uh, get his guns out of alignment, so that he can't blot me in the side, because I can't maneuver very much. Yeah, there he is, and he is shooting at me, but now he's only got this single rear turret on target. And he's being shot at by somebody else, so hopefully he will um, stop shooting at me and uh, do something else. And I can once again try to recapture A cup because we are behind on points. We've lost bo both teams have lost their bots, un uh, unsurprisingly. Oh, the Amagi is back. Uh, he might have turned the ship around. Okay, so and there's the Tashkent. Okay, so no A cup for me then. Okay, Amagi is on triple tri triple insta fire. I'm sorry. Hidamakons, obviously, so now we set the Amagi on fire again. <laughs> and uh, this is not uh, the typical amount of fires that you get in these ships. I I've played the Akizuki long enough <laughs> to know that this doesn't always happen. But uh, like I said, this is one game with, that's a double permafire, <laughs> this is one game that just went my way. Um, due to both RNG, and that's a triple perma, uh, both RNG and the enemy's play enemy player's lack of, um, well... <laughs> Let's call it doing something about it. And anyway, engine boost up. Let's try if we can get A cup again. There's that Tashkent. I know he's behind that corner, so I'm already turning left a little bit. And the Amagi is... Yeah, yeah, I think I've seen him blopping up. Oh, there's the Bismarck as well. Okay, Tashkent is coming up, so Torps are out against the Bismarck. Once again, we are recapturing A cup. There come the Tashkent Torps. He's still trying to torpedo me. And he's running away. Okay, perfect. I can live with that. I've got a Bismarck to play with. Okay, let's see if we can set some fires on the Bismarck. I don't know if the Bismarck's got Hydro running or paying, been paying attention. I'm not yet in Hydra range of that thing, but I need to get out of here before that happens. And guess what? I'm gonna I'm gonna lose A cup again, am I not? Uh, we are ahead on points, and with, we're one kill ahead at this point. And we are holding. Well, we used we we were holding. Yeah, the Bismarck knows I'm here. We were holding all the cups for a minute, so I do need to get out of um, out of that out of secondary range of that thing. 
and then you know just rain death and destruction using a high explosive solution. This might even even bother to to Damakon the fires, or maybe his Damakon's on cooldown. But either way, um, hey, yeah, that that's uh, that, how many are we? About? Eighteen fires so far. <laughs> But I mean, that's what you do with these things. These things are gunboats, right? Uh, for, the torpedoes are just there for um, for things like pushing enemy uh, enemy ships away or the occasional uh, torpedo drop. All right, let's see if we can get the kill on the Bismarck, and then we're gonna head back and once again try to capture A Cup. I think the Amagi has had enough. He's heading south, uh, straight into the other into the next map. The Tashkent is still somewhere out there, but he's on low health, and uh, I'm not super afraid of a Tashkent who's trying to torpedo kill me. Uh, yeah, he figures he's, he's better off uh, trying to fight our cruiser up there, which means I can finally get myself into A Cup. And um, I have had a grand total of 19 fires <laughs> for, for over 300 uh, main battery hits. But that's generally what you want to do in these ships. You just want to keep blazing your guns. And if the enemy team is, is this accommodating in uh, A, not shooting at me, and B, not damaconing fires, then um, I, I am I am I am rather pleased with this thing, with the outcome. But yeah, we haven't we've got two, two torpedo hits on a bot. We haven't really done anything with the torpedoes. The rest is all down to fires and <laughs> and uh, main battery damage. So uh, finally, we have A Cup, and yeah, the Amagi is trying to get into the next map. And uh, I think the Tashkent seems to have survived, uh, to my great surprise. But uh, yeah, that was 112,000 damage, relatively easily. Now, um, what if? things don't go your way. Well, <laughs> uh, that, that's uh, that's what I've got coming for, coming up for you next. But before we go there, let's have a very quick look at our team list <laughs> and at all the things. We, of course, did get the Witherer, I think, for that and uh, the High Caliber. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, 47,000 damage with the main batteries alone. So don't underestimate these 100 millimeter guns. They are um, they are doing a lot of damage if you if you let them. Anyway, uh, on we go. In our second battle, we are once again top tier, and it's a 6v6 this time. We are up against uh, Shokaku, Kansas, Bismarck, Gascogne, and an Ochakov, and an Aka on the enemy team. Now. Like I said, you do have the defensive AA skill, and it can and will do some damage against uh, against carrier planes, especially if you're top tier. I mean, this is a tier eight carrier, but uh, it's not you, you. You're not in a Friesland. <laughs> Let me put it this way. So we are spawning on the east side of this map. So I'm a, I'm gonna head out and scout, presuming that the carrier probably won't do it. And uh, there was one. I, I do have a cruiser with me, so hopefully that'll. That'll be somewhat helpful. Uh, I don't like this map because uh, there's just, there, there are too many islands and it's often two times too, too, hard, too, hard, too hard to find the enemy team. So engine boost up, uh, carrier is going straight as as common, and um, which is understandable because oftentimes uh, if the ships split up to the flanks in a carrier, you actually get uh, get somebody coming straight at you through the middle and then you know doing all and then just capping the base while everybody else is halfway across the map doing anything. So I'm out here on scouting duty, and that's where the better concealment obviously comes in helpful as well. But um, I am probably likely to hit at least one of the enemy destroyers, so either the Akka or the bot. So I am switching over to the armor piercing, just in, in assumption that I'm going to be running into a destroyer. But I do have a cruiser with me, so that should not be a huge problem. Uh, we've got something... Uh, okay, yeah, it's the, it's the bot Akka, so okay. Uh, back to the high explosive because uh, once again while the armor piercing does more damage bots don't damage on fires and um, anyway well <laughs> nice try there bots trying to torpedo me that's actually relatively rare that they do that but uh, yeah i just want to avoid taking taking a lot of damage because the bots obviously shooting at me and rely more on um, on the cruiser behind me to take care of this thing so we can get on with our lives here and uh, be useful to our team so that's a double fire, that's a torp hit from the cruiser, and that thing should be dead. Okay, there she goes, nice. All right, now uh, I am moving ahead here because I, I, the carrier is busy on the other side, and uh, obviously, well, w what I need to do is, um, what I need to do is, is get into some flanking positions, get my guns firing. Unfortunately, at this point, the carrier decided to come over here. So I'm putting my smoke up, because A, I've got three of them, and the defensive AA, and B, these are, these are uh, torpedo bombers. So I don't want to be spotted 
for him to also lock on dive bombers. So the dive bombers are on the other side, um, but uh, this is a Japanese carrier, and these torpedo bombers are uh, relatively dangerous. Now I am radared, which is very unfortunate. So I am going to maneuver in circles here backwards just to throw off his torpedo, uh, his torpedo planes as much as much as possible. But he doesn't seem to be interested in me. Now the radar tells me something. The radar tells me that Liochakov is somewhere around here, and he is in radar range. So uh, and I don't see him which means he has to be somewhere around the center islands, possibly, but I'm not sure. Radar does work through islands, <laughs> funnily enough. Okay, we've lost our Amagi, uh, and the enemy team's lost uh, lost one, was one ship as well. Okay, so that was a fair trade. But um, yeah, they have abandoned this flank here completely, uh, although the, uh, the other destroyer is on the other side. So I am once again trying to get into a position to use my guns because you know uh, on there is the Ochakov. now that is very unfortunate now he doesn't he can't see me um, and if I was in an Aki, in an Akizuki that would be a dead Ochakov because I would have eight torpedoes unfortunately I am in a I am in a Fenyang so I only have I only have uh, have one spread so I'm smoking up here Dropping the torpedoes, and then we're just gonna try and kill that Ochakov before he can do something about me. Now, we'd be grand if my team was helping. I mean, he was just sitting here, um, trying to set fires, obviously. But uh, the Ochakov also has a smoke, and um, he's, he's still not. I'm switching back to the high explosive because he's getting a little out of range, but now I need to move and uh, see if I can hopefully get a perma fire. And the carrier is coming as well, although the carrier can't target me yet. But uh, the Ochakov now no, has noticed me, smokes up. And um, this is this is where it gets a little tricky because my my own smoke's out and I am in reverse, so I am just trying to circle here, trying to get behind the island. He's on fire, so I know where he is, but uh, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, that hurt pretty bad, but we did get the Ochakov killed. Unfortunately, we've lost a lot of hit points that way, and the carrier has been spotting me. So uh, the Bismarck's also shooting at me. So at this point, I can run, but just dunk my torpedoes in the general direction of these guys. But um, there come the uh, ter carrier torpedo bombers, my uh, defensive AA is on cooldown, and um, uh, yeah, uh, with, with 5,700 hit points after that hit by the Bismarck, even with the friendly carrier's fighters, you, uh, you already know what's happening. If the carrier is worth anything, I managed to dodge the first spread, but of course the second spread is perfectly timed, so there's absolutely no chance for me to dodge that, and um, there we go. Yeah, so that was that. But we have shot nine planes down, which wasn't bad for a destroyer, and could have been more if if I had uh, if I still had a chance to do anything. But yeah, um, in in an Akizuki, this would not have been as much of a problem because I would literally have one shot the Achakov, because I could have dunked enough torpedoes into him to just kill him because he didn't know I was coming, and that would have uh, that might have been a very different game. But um, it's three on three, we're ten points behind. But that's a full health Kansas. There was a full health Bismarck back there. And uh, uh, yeah, that, that Amagi is on low hit points, that Albemarle is on low hit points, which means it's really only the carrier who can do anything. And um, uh, yeah, I think that that game is pretty much decided. So yeah, the, the lack of torpedo alpha strike makes this a little bit more difficult to play at points. And um, it's, it's not a bad ship, right? don't get me wrong. The defensive AA uh, can can do some damage to, to enemy planes, as you've seen, and but it, it is, especially if it's not up, um, and yeah, as you can see, the carrier clearly knows what he's doing. Uh, if it's uh, if it's not up, then um, your AA is actually worse than on an Akizuki, and uh, you can't really, uh, you can't really defend yourself on your own against, uh, against enemy carriers. So if there's a carrier in play, uh, you can't go on by yourself, just cons thinking that you might... <laughs> and look at that, the Kansas dodges these airdrop torpedoes mostly. Uh, you, you can't really defend yourself against it. So is, is the defensive AA traded for the torpedo reload a worthy trade? In my opinion, it's not. I personally would have rather had a torpedo reload booster, uh, just like on the Akizuki. But I, I do understand why they're doing it, because, you know, there has to be a differentiating factor between the two, otherwise you literally just have two Akizukis. But um, given that, given the competition and that both the Akizuki herself uh, is free and the Xian Yang is free, uh, I'd say if you want an Akizuki-class gunboat, uh, get the Akizuki. And if you want a Pan-Asian destroyer with uh, deep water torpedoes and smoke screens, uh, get yourself the Xianyang, because the Xianyang is an absolutely amazing ship uh, as well. 
Now, yes, you get an additional uh, an additional engine boost, and yes, you get an additional smoke, and the three smokes are useful, don't get me wrong. So this is by no means a bad ship, right? So what I'm saying is it's not a bad ship, it's actually a very, very good ship. This is a fun ship to play, just like the Akizuki is a fun ship to play. Uh, I just personally find that um, she's not necessarily much better than the Akizuki, and such that if you want a ship of this class, you may as well get a free one. Uh, although that means that you do have to grind through the rather dreadful Hatsuharu and Shiratsuyu, but uh, they have been buffed again in the recent update, so maybe it's not all that dreadful anymore. Just keep in mind that the Akizuki is the first gunboat in this li line of gunboats, because the previous one, while being called gunboats, are torpedo boats. Right, that sums that up. So if you see one of these things around, then you know what it is. And if you want to get yourself one, be my guest. If you like the ship and you don't haven't gotten haven't been grinding anything and you just want to get it, absolutely, it's a good ship. But uh, personally, I prefer my Aki over this thing. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.